Many people have been talking over the last five to ten years about how India is going to develop and how it's going to become this force in the world. But it feels to me that, it, that this is now happening. Once upon a time, you started as a broker on the streets of London to be group chair and senior partner on Night Frank. But let me just make it back to where it all started. You know, so your first deal, your your best client. And I didn't really know what I was doing. I remember, and the agent on the other side of the deal was incredibly experienced. And and he could have taken me to the cleaners, but in fact, he almost looked after me during that Phenomenal. transaction. That lived with me. Brokers from different businesses. You can be highly competitive, but also friends. The relationship piece is really important to actually getting business done. We've had to evolve. We've had to move up the value curve. We've had to become more sophisticated, uh, more entrepreneurial. I suppose the, the one thing I've, I've learned is that you know you learn something new every day. The India business is front and center of our global network and our global expansion. We absolutely see the next 10 years being about Asia. What, what, one of the things I, I always find is amazing about our role is that we get involved in these extraordinary um, projects which change cities, which change the environment. And we play a small part, but I always look at schemes like Battersea Power Station. And I'm really proud, one, that, that Knight Frank's played a part to changing that 40 acres of London. In the same way that you know some of the transactions you're doing across these amazing cities in India, you can look at them and go, you know, we played a part. People usually you say that he has a rich legacy or she has a rich legacy and created history. Here you've created geography and created a legacy. Yeah. You've created a landmark and that's the phenomenal part of our business uh, to be able to participate in that growth. Welcome to India, William. Thank you, Viral. And uh, is this your 10th time? I don't know how many times. I've been here a lot of times and every single time it's a pleasure. First time in Hyderabad. Fantastic. And if you look at the skyline and if you look outside, I've had the privilege to see this evolve over the last sort of 20 years and uh, it's one of my favorite cities. Well, we went around Knowledge City yesterday and unbelievable. Um, you know, a development of the quality of as good as anywhere I've seen around the world. Absolutely. And um, again, uh, you know, with uh, what we have been doing in India over the last few days, uh, going around Mumbai and then, of course, Hyderabad, uh, meeting clients and in your position as group chair and senior partner, Knight Frank uh, Global, what do you feel about how is it shaping up and, you know, of your various visits in India? I think uh, we were talking earlier about the fact that um, many people have been talking over the last five to ten years about how India is going to develop and how it's going to become... Uh, this force in the world, but it feels to me that, it, that this is now happening. We're, we're sort of in the now. And the change that I've seen over the last five years um, with the infrastructure coming through actually having such an impact on um, the growth of the country. Um, we've just seen clearly that Modi looks like he's got another five years, albeit uh, with yes. not the majority expected. But I think that is just going to keep India moving in this incredible direction. Extraordinary economy, um, really exciting place to be operating right now. Great. No, and uh, we're also quite excited. Uh, of course, we were emerging as the soft power uh, and the whole digitization of the economy. And I think the, the big change that we are perhaps going to be witnessing and that's going to be how India shapes up is how we will deal with our journey in the manufacturing space. But to just switch uh, <coughs> all together, and of course, you know, it's been what, uh, 28 years at Knight Frank? 33. 33, sorry, pardon me, 33 years <laughs> 33. at Knight Frank. And uh, did you start as a broker? And you know, how has been that journey? Um, look, I feel really lucky. I've had an incredible journey at Knight Frank. So I, I started as an office leasing broker, um, doing work for both landlords and tenants um, in the city of London. And over that period of time, uh, I've been involved in some of the most amazing projects in London. And well, you know, as we came to know each other probably 10 or so years ago when I got involved in the global service line. Absolutely. Um, and that was a real change for me. It was a real um, opportunity to go and see markets around the world. It completely alters your perspective. And, you know, I end up sitting here today as senior partner after that journey and I suppose the one, the one thing I've, I've learned is that you know you learn something new every day and that's the most enjoyable thing about this role. Phenomenal and uh, you know what is great to hear is that once upon a time you started as a broker on the streets of London to be group chair and senior partner on Knight Frank so you know speaks uh, volumes about how the firm is and you know how uh, 
uh, you've been around for 33 years and, and, and counting and you know I've now spent 18 years uh, close to 18 years at Night Frank and uh, what is the big stickiness about being at Night Frank? In 33 years the business has changed beyond all recognition and in fact even in the last 10 uh, you know, I believe our business in Asia has grown threefold in the last 10 years. Our UK business has, has doubled in size. And therefore, the pace of change, we've had to evolve, we've had to move up the value curve, we've had to become more sophisticated, uh, more entrepreneurial. But what hasn't changed is the culture, our absolute focus on our people, finding the best people and giving them an environment in which they can thrive and develop. And having that attitude, that focus on relationships, both with our people and with our clients and, and teaching that. I think there's always been a culture also bringing people through and I believe some of our competition have lost that. And if we can continue to develop the people who are coming through the business, re I mean, reach down and pull people up is, a, is the way I look at it. Make sure you pass on your knowledge. No, and, and in all humility, you know, I kind of feel it in everything that you say that our people centricity, which Absolutely. is people internal or external, you know, yeah. whether it's our clients or our people internally, I think people who have worked at Night Frank long enough will be able to completely relate to it. Uh, in fact, we're coming off a off-site as a group. We spent uh, four days together uh, celebrating. I, 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 I know you didn't invite me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, 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 you have been invited. There's a, there's a, there is a task uh, which I had to sort of fulfill uh, yeah. of, of my uh, uh, goofy, I've, goofy performance which I've, you I've, led me on to. I've heard rumors of this. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, absolutely invited, uh, you know, in, in the most exotic location uh, next year. But what we got to do, um, you know, together as a group uh, and uh, I think it was just to celebrate our success. But everyone, we had 40 new people join us and, uh, you know, very, very happy to share that uh, everyone feels it. That mm. people centricity, which is so distinct to our culture, I think every single person feels it uh, across board. Uh, so thank you for uh, being able to drive this uh, right from the top uh, in London. I understand that you have a deep-rooted connection to India as well. I mean, uh, I know of uh, your family. Uh, you know, if you can tell us about that. I was brought up uh, by my my mother and father, who talked of India a lot. Um, because both of them were born in Calcutta oh, um, in, in the 1920s. And it's, it's, an, it's a funny story because they were born two weeks apart in the same hospital uh, oh, wow. and, and met on Victoria Station when they were 21 years old. Oh, phenomenal. Um, That's so, quite a story. So, um, a lovely coincidence. So, it, it's always been in my mind and, I, and I, I do feel, you know, there's a certain circularity about the fact that I've been able to spend quite a bit of time over here, which I haven't got to Calcutta yet, which I must do. Yes, yes, yes. So, so you've been to... Uh, of course, Mumbai, Bangalore, Delhi, Chennai, now this time to Hyderabad. I haven't been to Chennai yet. So oh, Chennai? I think that's next on the list. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she is lining that one up for me, I think. I think coming up, yeah, great. And uh, let me ask you, one of your best client pitches, you know, I'm, I'm, you know in your role today, you're dealing with uh, the business, but let me just make it back to where it all started. You know, so your first um, deal, your, your best client pitch. And Bassey Power Station plays uh, a sort of a, a massive part in my life. It was the last major client I suppose I worked with for the last 10 years of, of when, I, when I had a proper job. And the, we started working with Treasury Holdings uh, in 2007. They then went bust. And amazingly, we were instructed by the receivers to sell Bassey Power Station, which we sold uh, for 400 million pounds to the Malaysians. We then had to re-pitch to win the job back to advise on uh, the leasing. It was an interesting pitch because ourselves and CBRE, who were the incumbents before, were told, right, you have to come out to Kuala Lumpur and we want you to pitch together. Oh, wow. and together? Together. And, um, I never heard of this. I, I'd never done that before. And so and you had to practice so together I, to, or, or, you know, do this together? Exactly. To we, oh, wrote, wow. we wrote the pitch together. Uh, we That's practiced together. Some deep um, collaboration. We took the flight together. Oh wow! Um, and we stood in a, a room of 200 people. This extraordinary pitch process because the entirety of um, the Malaysian consortium was there, and uh, um, and we won. And it was uh, it would have been one of the most uh, I think gutting things had we not won it because um, you know when you're you've done it in the past, in the past. and then you exactly. this very very peculiar situation where you have to pitch together. Yeah. Uh, oh, phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, that's and, quite a story. I mean, the, w w one of the things I, I always 
find is amazing about our role um, is that we get involved in these extraordinary um, projects which change cities, which change the environment. And we play a small part. Obviously, you've got architects and developers and investors and owners. Um, but I always look at schemes like Bassey Power Station. Of course, we advised on the Apple transaction. And I'm really proud. One that Knight Frank, there were 100 people involved in that, from the person who you know, wrote the invoice or, or advised on the hotel or um, you know, the, the back office business services people to the brokers at the front. But Knight Frank's played a part to changing that 40 acres of London in the same way that you know, some of the transactions you're doing across these amazing cities in India, you can look at them and go, you know, we played a part, you know, um, and I always use um, the example of you know, something like a you know, Bangalore railway station where we have people in Knight Frank shirts running around. And, you know, I don't bang on about our purpose may be enough, but, you know, we are, you know, working in partnership to enhance people's lives and environments as well as making the deals happen. William, I read this beautiful line, uh, and this relates to, you know, generally to the real estate industry. If you look at these buildings here, people, usually you say that he has a rich legacy or she has a rich legacy and created history. Here you've created geography and created a legacy. So you, yeah. you've been able to create geography to your point on 40 acres at Battersea Park or this building here in Hyderabad. You yeah. know, you've literally created geography and that's your legacy. Yeah. You've created a landmark and that's the phenomenal part of our business uh, to be able to participate in that growth. But let me ask you, uh, did you, uh, vocationally, did you uh, gear up to become a broker or how did it happen to you? <laughs> it's an interesting <laughs> question. I, I fell into property really. I mean, I, I, I left college. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, so honest. <laughs> I, bumped, I bumped into um, somebody who gave me an opportunity in a residential estate agency in uh -huh. London. I did that for a while and then got an opportunity at a business called Allsops, which is a commercial business in the city. And I loved it. And the product was almost secondary. It was about this constant interaction with people yes. and having to build relationships. Yes. Um, and it's taught me so much about people. Um, you asked about the first ever transaction that I did. I, I remember it was a one-man band and acquiring him some offices. He was a lawyer in, in City Road in, in, in London, right on the fringes of the city. In those days, I only operated on the fringes and you know, right. small units. And I didn't really know what I was doing, I remember. And the agent on the other side of the deal was incredibly experienced. And, and he could have taken me to the cleaners, but in fact, he almost looked after me during that Phenomenal. transaction. And you know, he did a good job for his clients, made sure I did a good job for my client. That lived with me. The fact that that kind of relationship, because you know, I did another deal with that person about two or three years later, and what goes around comes around in our business. It's a small world. Phenomenal. You know, that first deal, like you, you know, always remains with you, that sort of takes you through all these years. But the funny part is that I haven't come across anyone who studied to become a broker. Yes. And imagine how well you've done, uh, you know, and I can say humbly, not, not bad as well on, at my end. Yeah, uh, pretty and, good, and, actually. And, <laughs> and, 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 you know, I, I keep saying this, I find it difficult to even explain to my kids even today what exactly we do. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> and to my, your parents. <laughs> when, I, when I send my photographs home to my you know, family WhatsApp group, I get back from my youngest daughter, you know, working hard or hardly working. Imagine, you know, and so uh, I, I agree with you. I find, I find it very difficult to explain. Yeah, and, and you're so honest that we didn't know what we wanted to do. Uh, and how you land up being in real estate and it's such a rewarding business, uh, you know, all through and through the overall sector. So, great place to be in. It, it, it's an interesting um, industry on the basis, and I was talking to a client about this last week. Clients, brokers from different businesses, you can be highly competitive, but also friends. Oh, yes. And, oh, yes. And in fact, that relationship piece, you don't have to be friends, but the relationship piece is really important to actually getting business done. Absolutely. And, and the trust you create with other people. In fact, let me ask you a question. Since the, the London is your market which you know at the back of your hand, how many commercial real estate brokers would be in London, both on the tenant side and landlord side put together across, the, let's say, the 10 agencies? In the commercial business, there are probably four or 500 brokers. So, I mean, on the other side, you're saying you're only competing with 500 people. Yes, Imagine but, but, in, but in fact, out of those 500, there are probably only 50 good ones. 
So if you're yeah. hardworking, you have yeah. EQ, you know, you are generally good with people, it doesn't matter what you wanted to do after your graduation. Yeah. You just go up the value chain. And, yeah. and it's one of those businesses where, uh, you know, if you wanted to be a cricketer, uh, you, like in India, you would be uh, competing with a million people, millions yeah. of people. But here you're only competing with 500. So yeah. I think it's an extremely rewarding business. Uh, there's a myth that it is, uh, you know, competitive. So let me just switch around uh, to ask you, what is your vision of the India business and you know how are you looking at the India business overall in context of uh, Nine Frank globally? Well look, um, as I've said at a couple of town halls recently uh, over the last two or three days, um, the India business is front and center of our global network and our global expansion. We absolutely see the next 10 years being about Asia. Um, uh, the restructuring of our European business is really important. There's a great opportunity there. Um, the UK business is, is going well, but there is not the type of growth there as an opportunity that we see um, in Asia Pac. And India is, you know, absolutely front and center of that. Um, the opportunity to build off the platform that's been created um, is significant. Um, and the leaders that India have are fantastic. You know, it, it's taking it to the competition and winning, really. I mean, now we, now we have the platform across Asia. We've had new leadership in Australia, in Singapore, in Hong Kong, and Greater China. Um, we've got an absolutely first-rate team, and that's a very exciting. The potential is fantastic. Fantastic. Great. Um, some fun facts, uh, you know, cricket or football? Both. Both? No. I mean, still. Cricket first. Cricket first. And cricket first. What team? Which is your team? Beyond England. Well, to, to be honest, I have never really followed county cricket closely. I've never really had a team. I mean, your I'm, village team. My village team, yes. I mean, I was passionate about playing it um, and, and played, you know, reasonably competitively till I was about. You were, were you always in the team or benching? I was always in the team. Bro. Of course, I was always in the team. Um, so yeah, no, I was. I was. I was reasonably a uh, reasonably good batsman. I bowled a bit. Oh, okay. So, so, so kind of uh, not, not, not quite, um, you know, Ben Stokes, but, um, you know, <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, no, I'm, but I, yeah, I followed England so all my life. Uh, what, batted left-handed and? Uh, batted left-handed, bold, bit, oh, of, wow. bit of sort of wow. military we, we, We've medium. been wanting to do this uh, for a while, you know, to, uh, you know. Are you still playing? Uh, well, I do, I do on weekends uh, with my... Uh, yeah. Uh, sons. Not yeah. just in the garden, but actually. Uh, no, no, probably leather yeah. ball cricket. Yeah. yeah. I, I got a knock uh, between uh, on my ribs and uh, b below that, uh, the fleshy little, part. A little bit slower than you used to be then, perhaps. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and the sun is getting faster, and yeah. uh, that stayed with me for about 10 days. So, yeah, yeah. I, I do my <laughs> bit as well. Yeah. yeah very good. <laughs> yeah. And uh, one, one of my absolute bucket list ambitions is to come and watch a test match in India. So. And, that's what I've got to sort out in the next two or three years. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, I'm gearing up to watch, uh, you know, hopefully Boxing Day uh, test match in uh, Australia oh, at wow. the end of the year. Fantastic. But each time that I've been to, you know, London or, you know, anywhere outside India, we end up on the losing side, whether it's T20 or uh, uh, test match. So let's see how it goes. Well, but the, that's the, a it's passion. A, it's an unluck unlucky coincidence for you with the strength of the Indian team at the moment. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not bringing luck. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, favorite Indian food? Um, I, I mean, I like all Indian food. We had an amazing meal last night. Oh, absolutely. And so at the moment, uh, like Nama. At the moment, Hyderabadi food is my favorite. Oh, excellent, <laughs> excellent, excellent. I guess uh, let's end with uh, asking you, which, what would you advise people to do, uh, you know, with their real estate? You know, you personally invested in real estate and what have you done with real estate uh, investments? Well, personally? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you know, I've, I've, I've bought residential property. I've never bought commercial property. Okay. Um, so, and also, I, I hesitate to, to, to advise anybody on, <laughs> on their investments. But, you know, I, I think the world has, has been through a very difficult four or five years. Um, COVID clearly uh, um, sort of disastrified people's view on, you know, no one's going to go to the office and... And, and we're now in a really interesting position where um, that seems to be turning. There is a, a, a significant confidence now 
uh, in the office sector. Um, but, but not just that. I think we're getting more sophisticated in the advice we're giving to clients across uh, living sectors, the um, repositioning of assets um, and private wealth. And um, what I would advise our people to be doing is to be very curious about our business. And the more you know about the Knight Frank business, the more you can start conversations with clients and become a more interesting advisor. One last question before we end. We are the only business globally, perhaps, uh, with a global footprint, which is a partnership business. And yeah. how does that sort of give us a competitive advantage or a distinct uh, sort of uh, standing versus uh, every one of our competition, which is uh, publicly trading? Look, very simply, I think it's about the way we show up. You know, we demonstrate the fact that that people centricity we spoke about, about our people and our clients, uh, drives everything that we do. Um, and I believe, because I, I meet one or two clients a week, and they talk to me about the platform and the fact that we're different. The way we approach the relationships is different. And we've just got to keep running at that because it's so powerful. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, William. That's our time with... Uh Senior Partner Group Chair, William Beardmore Gray, Knight Frank. So thank you very much, William. Thank you, Vero. Thank you.